Hey guys, it's Anthony Bandiero here, attorney and senior legal instructor with Blue to Gold Law Enforcement Training, bringing you the roadside chat from beautiful Castle Rock, Colorado. Okay, this officer is in Louisiana. He says, somebody sends a, dep sends a deputy a video that, that, um, that they have access to, and it shows a suspect, another person, right, snorting cocaine on a Snapchat or Instagram video that was sent to the person giving the video to the cop, right? So it's like a friend, and they're like, they're forwarding it to the police officer. The complainant, the friend, confirms, yes, that video, that's taken at that suspect's house, right? I know that house, I've been there, you know, they're snorting cocaine on the kitchen table, it looks familiar to me, and so forth. And, you know, maybe even they're willing to be a witness in the case. Would this be enough to get a search warrant? And the answer is no, because what we're, what's missing here is a staleness issue. We just don't have evidence here that that video was taken that, that same day probably, right? So generally speaking, isolated, ex uh, uh, isolated evidence of, of drug use is not generally gonna be enough to get a warrant for somebody's home, right? In other words, you're going to need to articulate why do you believe more cocaine is, or I guess you can say paraphernalia, but it's going to be in that house right now. Most judges are not going to give a warrant on one isolated use of cocaine when we don't even have a date. Now, if, the, if we can prove, let's say that there's um, you know, uh, a newspaper in the background and it shows today's date, I guess that happened today, that might be different. So no, I, I would not sign, a, if I was the judge, I would not give a, a warrant on these facts. I would want something more. The other issue that sometimes people will bring up as well, how can that friend, how can we even use that evidence, right? I mean, the suspect sent that video to his friend, you know, which is obviously not his friend or probably wouldn't be turning him in like this, right? Uh, maybe it's like an ex-girlfriend or something like that. Sent it to this person. Now that person is handing over private information about the defendant to the police. How is that possible? And that's called, you know, uh, uh, the private search doctrine, right? Um, there is no privacy interest implicated here when that suspect, that defendant has handed over information to another party and that party burns the defendant, right? And says, you know what? I don't like you anymore. I'm going to show the police what you're doing. There's no search or seizure that occurred there because there's no longer any privacy interest. It's like if somebody sends a text message to another person and that person shows the police that text message, obviously that text message doesn't have any reasonable expectation of privacy. So that's the deal there. So either way, you're fine. But at the end of the day, we're going to need more here to go get a search warrant for a person's home. All right. Now, will this be enough reasonable suspicion to detain them on the street? If you thought that this happened, you know, today type stuff, yeah, reasonable suspicion is not a is a lower standard, but not probable cause for a home search warrant. I hope this video has helped you get it right every single time. If you have any questions for me, go to bluetogold.com. If you like this video and moves the ball forward, you know what to do. Like, subscribe, share with your friends. Until next time, my friends, you stay safe.